All right, so here's a review again of your aquifers, aquifer diagrams, and the different components of those, as well as a touch up on what you guys should be studying beforehand. So here's a, a colored aquifer. Now I'm going to actually flip to um, a printed out one so I can show you the different components because you're going to need to know the different components to get the different 10 parts uh, from memory. And I'm going to give you a strategy on how to do that. So uh, just wanted to show you the color version so you could tell what's going on with this version. Okay, so here's my black and white version, but what I have here again, this is our water line. So whenever I go through this, I call or I, I start right out at the water table. Okay, and typically I, I go there because it's easy to tell if I have the water table there, that means that everything below it is saturated. So that's the saturated zone. Okay. Everything above it is unsaturated. Okay. And so I kind of group those three together because they all deal with the water table. And then the other thing that deals with the water table, actually, and I'm drawing it in here, is the capillary fraction. Okay, so those those four terms I typically group together because they all deal with the water table. Now, the next set of terms I'm going to go ahead and talk about, I typically group together with ordinary wells. So I'm going to go ahead and say this here is an ordinary well. Okay, now these ordinary wells are always equilibrated at atmospheric pressure. And what that means is that the well will rise only to the level of the water table. Okay. The other thing that is associated with ordinary wells is what we call an unconfined aquifer. Okay. So ordinary well, unconfined aquifer. Now the the last term that I have is a term all of them associated with artesian wells. Okay, so this one here is an artesian well. Okay, now when I have an artesian well, that means that it goes down to uh, aquifer that's under pressure, and this area here is that aquifer that's under pressure called a confined aquifer. Okay. Confined aquifers are formed because they are sandwiched between confining beds. So this layer right here that I'm highlighting is a confining. Bed. Okay. Lastly, you can tell that because this is a confined aquifer, the artesian pressure pushes it up and up to this dashed line. Okay. Again. Remember, the level at which a confined aquifer will rise to is the <coughs> potentiometric surface. So this dashed line is representing the... <laughs> okay, so those are your 10 terms. And again, that's a strategy for me to you uh, as to how to group these together and be able to remember all 10 from memory. So ordinary well, unconfined aquifer, those all go together. Your water table, that's associated with your saturated zone below, your unsaturated zone above, and then that small damp area, the capillary fringe. Lastly, a well that squirts or shoots up is an artesian well, and it's an artesian well because it's a confined bed atop a confined aquifer. The water rises to the potentiometric surface. Now, I'm going to go back to the color picture so you guys can see this. And actually, here's a key. Uh, they use some terminology that we don't use, but the rest of it should look familiar. Go ahead and take a look at this. This is another way to study. But realize the terms that we're going to be using are the ones that I have here. Okay. Now, lastly, I want to give you guys some time before you take your test to remind you that you guys should probably be studying your water cycle terms as well. So go back to Unit 12. Okay in Blackboard and go under Unit 12 Learning Target 1.
archive. When you do so, I'm waiting for this computer to work here. When you do so, go back and review these different things that we have underneath your water cycle because you're going to need to know all of those hydrologic terms as well. You should have a series of terms in your packet that has you look at those. Other than that, I would also urge you to study your lab that we did yesterday and be fresh on porosity and permeability because both of those two terms will also show up on your assessment.